Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aquarius. If Aquarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Aquarius. And, oops, our card today is the moon card, which feels very timely as we are right in the prime of the new moon <laughs> as I do this reading. So, uh, definitely very timely. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tealies have to say. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Okay, so immediately I see it almost looks like two people. You can see the their faces. One is right here, okay, and then the other one is right here. Kind of eyes meeting. It looks like they're kissing, okay? <laughs> it looks like two people kissing. Um, this is kind of the hair of this person, the hair of this person. Their mouths are kind of together there. Um, so immediately, I don't know, is this romance? Is this uh, kind of the... Um, are you in a, I feel like it's almost like more of a ro romantic mood. Um, this time of year can, you know, really kind of stir those fires, can't it? Uh, we're going into summer here in a couple weeks. It will be the solstice or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, going into winter. Okay. And I don't know about you. Um, but yeah, definitely when it's getting colder, um, that feels like to me the most romantic time of the year because you're getting all nested and cuddled up and all that. Um, and summer, yeah, I mean, it's more, it's, it's hotty <laughs> and, um, it kind of more, uh, ecstatic and, and, um, well, at times kind of bacchanalian, right? A little bit. Uh, of the bizarre and the the nightlife and fun and you know getting kind of swept away and all of it uh, so we're in that moon energy and to me that makes sense it absolutely does the things that happen at night that might not seem uh they might, it doesn't, it's not something you choose in the morning, right? It feels a little different when the light has come up, <laughs> when the sun is, ooh, I hit the little thing, when the sun has uh, made its appearance. So um, I do feel like though there is, there's this inclination towards um, kind of, you know, the more romantic side of things. Now we'll see if this is a if this is an actual person or um, maybe it is kind of just well you know you're watching romantic movies you got the rom coms going my favorite is um, not so much of a love story more of like a coming of age story which is stealing beauty um, a little bit subversive but it's the nineties. So it definitely has lived Tyler back then and and um, has always been one of my favorite movies since I was a kid. All right, this is funny looking. We have a person up here who has their tongue sticking out and you can even see it's a, a lighter colored tea leaf. How funny is that? So we have the body here holding what looks like a knife. Okay, the head here, tongue sticking out. Okay, over here it looks like we have some flowers. And over here we have a person who is sitting on top of what looks like a bird. Maybe like a hawk or something. Could also be a UFO, some kind of flying device. You can kind of see it has that old school UFO look with the little bubble on top. 
So <clears throat> I do. I feel like there's a sense of the bizarre, the silly, the outrageous. Um, it does to me. I look at this and I feel like this is almost like a clergy member or uh, you know some kind of like religious practitioner. But then the tongue is sticking out. Kind of reminds me of Kali, right? Um, we also, ooh, we also have the deer. Look at that, a young deer right here. You can see the eyes, the nose. Uh, and then over here, riding on top of, oops, riding on top of this kind of flying machine. So to me, immediately, it's like you're being swept away into these kind of fantastical world, like worlds. Um, I feel like probably you are creating something. There are kind of movements towards some kind of creative project or process. This one reminds me of very much of like uh, cognitive dissonance. So cognitive dissonance is when we can hold two opposing ideas or maybe many opposing ideas all at the same time. Okay, so you might have two things that seem like they would be at odds, but you believe both of them. And, um, and so, uh, to me, this feels like, yeah, like somebody who you would assume to be in this very, like kind of formal buttoned up, um, you know, uh, kind of stuffy, very serious, but then there's this kind of full energy, this silly energy going on. And so, um, I look at this and I'm thinking, there, there just is this period of time here where you are kind of breaking away from um, whatever's been going on, whatever you've been maybe working a lot, right? Taking care of family business, um, kind of very focused on getting things done, <laughs> you know, being um, pretty... Uh, Pretty productive. That's the word I'm looking for. Pretty produ productive. And you'll have to, excuse me, I just, I just woke up. I'm working early in the morning while everybody else is sleeping. This is usually Paul's time slot for working. So shout out to my husband over at Dove and Serpentero. Um, but I woke up earlier than anybody else in the house. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to go get my work done for the day. And, um, if you remember or not from a few months ago, I quit coffee. So uh, I just drink a whole bunch of water in the morning and hope for the best. <laughs> so it's all coming together here. Um, but I do like doing readings early in the morning because I feel so close to that dreamy world. I feel very connected to spirit in the morning. Um, so yes, uh, a break from all of the seriousness of life, of being productive, of getting things done in a timely manner, you know, all the like nose to the grindstone. So I feel there, there is this opportunity for you to kind of, yeah, laugh, smile, dance, be with people that feel like love to you. And, uh, yes, I absolutely, it feels so necessary, you know, and here's the thing about the universe. It will provide our opportunities. If we are aware of it or not, the universe always makes sure we have what we need that I know there are some, and I, every time I say that I cringe a little on the inside because yes, there is such a disparity in the world and um, there are times when our life seems unbearable it doesn't even make sense the cruelty the um you know just the injustice of things but i guess i can't help but believe you know there is some kind of meaning to all of this and i feel like when we live our life where we're just constantly going, going through the motions of things, going into this mode of grind, grind, grind. We got to get it done. Got to make more money. Got to do this. Got to, 
you know, have something to show for myself, like a legacy or whatever it is, right? We're all driven by different things. Um, but if we don't ever step outside of that, even for just a couple hours, right? Every once in a while, um, it just doesn't make sense anymore. I mean, at least to me, right? And I think in Aquarius, I'm an Aquarius moon. So I feel like an Aquarius, solar Aquarius, or any other kind of prominent Aquarius person, um, you know, can feel the same way. It's You start to feel like you're lost at sea, right? When you're not, when you don't have access to things that are enjoyable, pleasurable, uh, that, you know, kind of fill your soul, recharge you. Uh, so I do, I feel like this is a time where, yeah, it's like, let's get weird for a little while. <laughs> let's, let's just kind of step away from reality a little bit. Um, you know, get into these kind of sub realities. Uh, and so maybe for you, yeah, maybe that is going dancing or, or partaking in ceremony. Maybe it's even like playing video games or reading a good book or, you know, whatever it is. Being transported, okay? Now, we also have that deer. So this tells me there is a, uh, a, a very distinct spiritual moment coming. The sacred deer is one of the most important signs that we will see. It is absolutely, um, when we encounter the deer in our spiritual work, it is a profound moment of decision, okay? Um, I always kind of lean towards thinking about Castaneda's idea of the sacred deer. When we are walking through the forest, through the meadows, right? And this is, it can be in real life, right? Physical world. It could be a vision. It could be um, path working or um, active imagination. One of my favorites, right? Uh, or in the dream realm, interior landscapes, okay? But when we are confronted with the deer, and now it can be the stag, it can also be the doe or... Um, and or a younger, maybe a young deer, um, there is, there is a power there. There is, uh, there is a creature of um, just huge stature and grace, and um, you know, just something that is so uh, confronting, but in a way that is almost kind of enchanting, right? But then we have to decide, how do we approach the steer? What is the work here? Am I afraid? Is this a stag that's going to run me down? Is this uh, a, a creature that, um, and you can imagine almost if it's a, a cold morning, the breath coming out, right? It's all foggy. That's <clears throat> there is steam kind of rising off the back of this beautiful stag. It is, you know, ready to kind of rear up. If you've ever seen, you might think of a, a deer as being kind of like a, yeah, like a big old kind of wild horse or something. Now, horses are powerful too, but kind of, I don't know. There's something about a deer where you're like, oh, it's just so beautiful and graceful. It's not really that dangerous. Well, they are. <laughs> Especially if you encounter uh, a stag or a young male buck in rut, right? Which is mating season. And um, they will, they're very territorial. Terry, la, la, la. Very territorial. And so, yeah, there could be some fear there. What are you going to do? Are you the warrior? Are you going to hunt it? Are you the healer? Are you going to move, kind of go towards approach? connect heart to heart? Are you going to turn around and walk away and think, hey, this isn't my place? You know? Uh, are you just going to say hello and keep on going? 
I know, it's, this is kind of a thought experiment. And this is a place where we can kind of gauge what archetype are we dwelling in? Where are we at in our life right now? So I do, I feel like this is almost a time in your life where, yeah, you're kind of measuring parts of self, taking kind of a diagnostic of where do you stand with things? And I think having this, this moment of, yeah, jovial celebration of letting go, of, of loosening the grip of control on your own life and how you perceive your own life so that you may kind of, you know, let, let go of what you already think things are. Sometimes our perception gets so tied to a certain idea, especially about what we are, who we are. It can go on for years and years and years. And it is very limiting. So we need these times where, yes, we let go a little bit. We, we, let our, we give ourselves room to kind of evolve. And I feel like that, that is really the work here. Not having necessarily, um, of course, having goals, but not necessarily uh, being so tightly round or wound around this idea, this goal, this one thing. You know, it's like uh, I, well, yeah, like I want to be a mother, right? And this is the only thing. This is the singular focus of my life, Right. There's, and this is all I care about. This is all, it is the path towards. Well, there are a lot of things that we are, right? And they all kind of lend um, strength into one another. So we have to sometimes let go of this, I am mother, right? <clears throat> I am, I am a caregiver. I am, you know, healer. I am whatever it is, Right? Letting loose a little bit so that you can grow in all directions. And I feel like, you know, you already know this Aquarius. You're very intuitive people. Not often stuck in one way or another, but you do. You get in your heads a lot. All right, let's see. Um... You know, we do have a, a tooth up here. We have a person kind of, it looks like has like maybe a drill or something. So I feel like maybe, yeah, there's some kind of maybe dental um, something going on. Inflammation or um, a toothache or something. Uh, important to always get that stuff checked out if you have access to a dentist. Um but yeah, it does. It feels, I can feel there's like a sense of a little bit of pain here. We also have, it looks like AP. Maybe even TAP, TAP. We also have the number 110. And we have 20, oh, two, no, yeah, 214. 110 and 214 for numbers. Okay, let's go ahead and look over here. I'm gonna pour this in here. So I'm gonna pour it all over the table, which I do quite often. So we have 14 on this one. It's of a heart. So I feel like there has been an opportunity that maybe you were kind of excited about. And this might be actually the catalyst of taking a break. Um, opportunity you were excited about. And it feels like you were pretty dang sure that you were going to get it. This is, this is your thing. Um, I don't feel, I feel like it didn't work out. I don't think that it came to pass as you expected it, 
But I think part of it was that you just, <clears throat> you just kind of, you just knew it was yours, right? And maybe didn't put in the exact effort. <laughs> and that, listen, I, I've been there. I've been there. I just, I, I assume this is going to be passed on to me. I'm going to do this job. This is my thing, but I don't necessarily apply myself a hundred percent. And, uh, and yeah, it seems like maybe this was kind of a letdown, but I think it's a blessing in disguise. This opens up time and opportunity for you to be doing some other things. And so, um, you know, sometimes we have these little heartbreaks, but, you know, this is the universe telling us maybe that's not for me, even though maybe I've been doing it consistently, you know, maybe I've like, I'm thinking like, you know, running like some kind of, uh, maybe you're a volunteer and you run some kind of project or event or something. And every year you're the one in charge of it. And then suddenly this year you didn't get it. Somebody else is doing it. And now to you, it maybe seems like a slight, but maybe to the people around you, it's like, okay, well they do it all the time. So maybe it's somebody else needs to take that responsibility. Um, so I do feel like, yeah, this is, this is an opportunity for you to, to be doing something else with your time for a while. Um, and maybe, yeah, taking like the support position, helping somebody else figure out how to do this thing because you've already done it. So maybe, it, you know, you'll, you'll be somebody they can call upon. And if not, maybe this is an opportunity for you to find something else, right? Like I keep saying something else, something else. <laughs> um, now we have a swan up here. So I feel like, yeah, that romance again. And this is the thing is that I feel there is a sense of, I don't know, maybe being a little bit distracted by this feeling of, um, you know, a more, and maybe there's somebody new that's special in your life. And maybe this is partly why you, um, you are less, focused on the things that you know usually you are doing um which makes sense or maybe it's just a time to kind of find a little bit of leisure find a, a something something to do that is just um well i'm trying to think i was trying to think what can we do where we don't have to do anything <laughs> Oh, maybe go and, uh, you know, take a nap out in the, um, next to the lake or, uh, go for a swim, go for a nice walk, go for a hike, you know? And yeah, those are all kind of things, active things, or at least somewhat. And, but, you know, I think it's important. It's important for us to take time. And it feels like, I mean, summer hasn't even started, but I get so wound up about getting things done during the summer and having as many experiences that it's barely into June and I'm already like, I feel behind. I am not doing as much as, as I want, you know, um, we haven't been swimming, uh, enough and, or, you know, whatever. I haven't been to any farmer's markets yet, which, um, I, I lament, but you know, life is busy. And I have to remind myself, we have to take it easy. It can't, we can't fill our days from top to bottom every single day. It just, you get burnt out. So it really is a, a take it easy, baby steps kind of situation here. All right, let's go ahead and do our wild offering oracle cards. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip through Stop where it feels right. And it says despair. Oh boy, what's going on with despair? I need your divine intercession right now. Oh great spirit, lift this darkness from my soul. Free me from this burden. Open me to your highest plan. May I be a peaceful vessel 
for your love. May I be a peaceful vessel for your love. Yes. Well, if there is despair, uh, that's not surprising with that lunar energy. She can be very hard on us at times. Um, so, you know, do some things. I know I keep saying it, but I just feel like this is the thing. You just have to find something. And it maybe will be something that is so random. Um, I'm the, I, we go to the library and stuff, right? And um, they have bulletin boards there where it has all these, you know, little workshops and, and um, little meetups and things about art galleries showing and, and whatever, right? There's little meals. Where I live in the upper Midwest here, um, the volunteer fire departments and, you know, whatever city um chamber of commerce and you know whatever and churches they all have these meals like every weekend there's always like pancakes or waffle meals or um you know fried fish or spaghetti feeds or whatever i mean just tons of things going and so i look for these different kinds of events things that maybe i don't have any idea what the heck it is um even this weekend, I'm interested. I'm going to try to swing by. They're having a, um, like a chamber music retrospective at a, at a local church. And so I just, I feel like if you just get out there and get in the paper, get on the Facebooks or wherever, find some little bizarro thing going on. Not that any of these are bizarre, but you know, to you, it might be like something you've never done, never thought about. You don't even, you didn't even know that building existed in town, you know? Um, but go try some things, get out there, be brave. You know, um, you might find something that you really love that you had no idea was even a thing. So anyways, Aquarius, I love you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not uh, subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you would like to leave a comment, please do. I read them all. They mean the world to me. And um, what else? Other than that, no, I think that's it. So we'll talk in a couple days. Take care of yourself. Good night, good night, good night. No, it's not night. It's morning. Good morning. Ha, ha, ha.